Hello and welcome. Last year I released a very popular video called How to make your VBA code run 1000 times faster. It demonstrated how to make your code run exponentially faster by implementing little known methods. In this video I'm going to show you more proven techniques that will dramatically increase the speed of your application. And just like in the last video, I'm going to start with an application that is running extremely slow and I'm going to make it run 1000 times faster by implementing these techniques. Now, if you like this video, then please click on the like button and to get notified about any upcoming videos, click on the subscribe button below and then click on the bell icon beside it. So let's get started by looking at the code that we are about to change. This is the code that we're going to be changing. Now at the moment for 50,000 records, this code takes approximately 34 minutes to run. What we're trying to do is get it up to 200,000 records. And at the moment that would take probably two and a half hours upwards to run. Now normally when we multiply the number of records, it grows exponentially the time as well. So the time could get up to anything. When I'm running these tests, obviously I'm not going to do it with 50,000 records as it takes too long. So I'm going to do it with a subset of 5,000 records. Now how we, what we want to do first is we want to time it. So we use the micro timer. Now you can Google micro timer, Charles Williams, and you will find it on his site. So the micro timer allows us to time to the millionth of a second. We're going to multiply by a thousand so that we're just getting a millisecond or one thousand of a second. It's very easy to use. We do dim time as double. And then we set the current time to equal to the current time from the micro timer. So this will be down to millions of a second. And then at the very end, what we do is we basically subtract them. So we have micro timer, the current time now, minus the time that we saved. And let's multiply that by a thousand to give us the output. So when we run this code, what we will get is how long it takes for it to run. So it gives us the time from the start to the finish. Now, the, the problem that we have is that we're gonna put these all through our code and each time it's given us how long it took from the start to run. So what I did was I created a simple class and the class gives us the time from the last time we timed it. So if we look at the main timed here, you can see my timer start. And then when I do a print time, this is gonna give us back the time since the start. When I do the next one for update email, it will give us back the time since get range and so on. So it gives us very easy calculation how long everything takes. And when we run the code then, we can see exactly how long each part is taking. And this in turn then will help us to identify the slow areas in our application. So we're gonna run the code and you'll see the results will appear in the immediate window on the right hand side. So let's go ahead, we press F5, we run the code and you can see that we've got some data back. So, so far the first five items, they've all ran pretty quickly but the next one is taking a long time. So you can see the final one, write dictionary to the worksheet, took a considerable amount of time to run. So let's put these on our spreadsheet so we can track exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna paste our results in here. You can see the percentage breakdown on the right hand side. And from this breakdown, you can clearly see that write dictionary to worksheet is taking up by far the most time. So this will be the first one that we tackle. So we can see fixing this will be an easy win. So let's have a look at write dictionary to the worksheet and see what's in this code. So we have write dictionary to the worksheet here. You can see that it's just down there. A quick pause to tell you about the Excel VBA handbook course. Are you struggling to build VBA applications? Do you find it difficult to get good information on how to create real world VBA code? Is it a struggle? every time you try to create a VBA application, no matter how simple it is. Well, the Excel VBA handbook course teaches how to build real world Excel VBA applications from scratch. Unlike most courses, you won't be overwhelmed with information and left to figure out how to put it all together. Instead, you'll be taken step by step through 10 Excel VBA applications with every concept explained. Once you start working through VBA applications, you'll be amazed how quickly your VBA skills increase. So check out the VBA handbook course at the excelvbahandbook.com and the link can also be found in the description below the video.
So if we look in the Write Dictionary to Worksheet, we can see straight away what the problem is. So we're writing out to the worksheet for each item in the dictionary. So we're writing out the key and we're writing out the item for, for that key. So that means if there's a thousand items, we're going to be writing out 2000 times. Now the problem is every time we write to the worksheet or read from the worksheet, there is a time cost. So we've got to reduce that as much as possible. So what we want to do is write it out in one go if possible. And luckily for us, the dictionary has got a keys function and this gives us back an array. So we can get the, all the keys back and write them out directly. And we can do the same thing for items as well. So we get rid of our loop because obviously we don't want to be running through our loop a lot of times. And what we need to do now is we need to resize. So sheet output cells row one, what we want to do is resize that cell into the same size as the number of items in the array. So we just do a resize and we say the number of rows is dictionary count and we've got one column because we're writing it out to a column. So we do exactly the same thing for our items. So this will write it out to column two. Now the thing about dictionary keys and dictionary item is that they return arrays and the array is in the format of a row, but we want it as a column. So we can just simply use worksheet, function and transpose, and that will convert it from a row to a column. And of course we're doing the same thing for items. And so let's do a debug compile, make sure everything is okay. So then we'll run the code and we'll see exactly how the speed works. And you can see that is considerably faster. So let's put this in our spreadsheet. So we paste in the results and you can see that is considerably faster. In fact, if we look here, we can see that the total time is now 363 times faster. And our right dictionary, it was taken about four minutes before and now it's taking only 113 milliseconds. So that's a considerable difference. So now we can see that recollection to dictionary is the one taking the longest time. So that's the one that we're going to concentrate on next. But first of all, what we should always do when we make changes is just check our output and make sure that what we did worked correctly before we move on. So we know that it worked the same way as the original code. Now if we go down to the end of our data, we'll see that it has 5,000 results and that's what we were expecting. So as I said, now we can look at read collection to dictionary. And that's this one here. So we can just right click and go to the definition. So if we look in the read collection to dictionary sub, it doesn't seem to be really doing anything too extraordinary. But one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that using a for loop, losing like for i equals one, is a lot slower than using a for each loop when we come to using a collection. So we should change this to a for each loop. So instead of this, we say for each item in the collection. And then we reference the item like this. Now we declare the item as a variant, but we still want to use i. So we'll just say i equals one, and then we'll just update it every time that we add it to the dictionary, we'll just add one to i. So in other words, we'll have a, a key one, a key two, and so on. So we go to the top of our sub. So we'll open our immediate window, and then we'll run the code. Now you can see that we got the results back. So let's check these results against our previous results. So now we can see that if we look at what happened there, recollection to dictionary, the first two times we didn't change it, it was approximately somewhere between 188 and 210 milliseconds. Now it's down to 33 milliseconds. So you can see that is between six and seven times faster. So this can make a considerable di difference because we're only dealing with 5,000 records. Now, when we get up to dealing with 200,000 records, it can grow exponentially how, how slow this happens. So it's important that we understand these areas that we can make the key differences. So we can see now that empty collection now seems to be the one that's taking the most time. So empty collection taking somewhere between 143, 163, and it's making up 43% of the time that our application is taking to run. So let's have a look at empty collection. So you can see here that we're trying to empty everything in the collection. Now the easiest way to empty everything in the collection is just to set it to nothing. So not to bother with using a for loop like this. We can just do set collection equals nothing. Or we can set, if we want to use the collection again, we could set the collection equals new collection. That will create a new empty collection. 
But if we just want to empty it out just to spare memory, we can just say set collection equals nothing. So that saves us having to read through all the items. So let's run the code on this one, see if we gained any benefit. These are the results. We'll paste them into our Excel spreadsheet and see what we get. So we paste in our results here. And you can see that if you look in the green line, you can see after the first one, we had a 363 times improvement. Then we got 629 and now we're up to 826. So you can see that for empty collection, it made a huge difference. So rather than somewhere between 143 and 163 milliseconds, we're now down to four milliseconds. So that's a significant improvement. Now, I don't think we can do any more with write dictionary to worksheet. What we can do is have a look at update email and see if we can make any improvements there. So if we look at update email here, where we call it, what we're actually doing is we're passing in an array, we're making a change to the array, and then what we're doing is we're returning the array. Now returning the array like this is quite slow. So let's have a look at update email. So you can see that we pass in the array as a variant and then we return it. Now this is very slow because we're passing it in and what happens is when we pass it back, VBA has to create a second one or a second set of data and this makes it very slow indeed. So what we should be doing is not passing it back. So this should just be a sub and we should be passing it in by ref. Now in the case of a variant array like this, by ref is faster because we're just referencing the outside array and then we make a change to it. In normal circumstances, we pass things by val. And the reason we pass things by val is that if we make a change in the sub to the variable, it doesn't get changed outside. But we're breaking the rules slightly for this because we want it to run a bit faster. Now there's one other place here you can see that we're also using by val for the array. So we're going to change this to by ref. And we'll do a debug compile now, this tells us that we're not allowed to pass it back, which is good. And we'll get rid of the parenthesis here. We do control G and let's run the code and see what the difference is. So we've got the results. Let's copy them to our worksheet. So you can see when we paste in the results that for our update email that we got a significant advantage. So it went from approximately between 37 and between 47 milliseconds down to 15 milliseconds. So you can see that that is quite an improvement. So now we're up to 879 times faster than what our previous code was. So now we're going to make one more change to our code. So if you look at the dictionary line here, you can see I'm using create object. And what this means is that we're doing late binding. So the dictionary is an external library and we can connect to it using early binding or late binding. And you can see more about that on my blog post on the dictionary. But what we're going to do is we're going to change from late binding to early binding. So this means we change from object to as new dictionary. Now, what we need to do first is we need to go to tools, references, and make sure that Microsoft scripting runtime is turned on. Now you need to turn it on for every project. I've just had it turned on already because I was doing some testing, but you need to turn it on for any project that you want to use early binding. And so we don't need the create object line and anywhere that we're using object, we can replace this with dictionary. So we've, we've changed them all. So let's go to the top and let's run the code and see what kind of results we get. And now let's paste these into our worksheet and see if we got any kind of improvement. Now when we paste in our results, you can see that recollection to dictionary has made a significant improvement. So it's gone from 38, 33, so that was kind of the ballpark figure where it was, it's gone down to four milliseconds. So this is seven times faster. Now in terms of milliseconds, these changes mightn't seem like a lot, but remember we're only doing this for 5,000 records. And as we increase our records up to 200,000, there'll be a, big, a significant time increase. Now our overall improvement since we started has been over 1,000 times. So our code is now, which started running at 204,000 milliseconds, it's now down to 173 milliseconds. And as I said, for 50,000 records, 
it was taking us 34 minutes to run. So this is a significant improvement indeed. If you're having trouble with your code, if it's running very slow and you want to identify the areas with the problems, here are four tips that you should follow. So use the micro timer as it allows you to see the speed on a smaller set of data and start with a small sample of data. So if you're having problems with 50,000 records and it's taken like 30 minutes to run, what you want to do is you want to start with a much smaller sample so that your code will run very quickly and you can identify the problems much quicker. So what you should do is start with the bottlenecks. So when you look at the different areas of your code, if there's one that's really, really slow, that's the place that you should start. You'll get an easy kind of change there. And one thing to keep in mind is that you should close all other applications. So if you run your speed tests with some applications open, they can significantly slow down how Excel is running. And if you run it at another time with no applications open, then your speed can be quite different and you may not realize that this is the problem. So the best thing to do is close all other applications. In today's video, we started with code that was running slow and we made it run a thousand times faster. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got some use from it. If you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. Now, please let me know if you found these tips and tricks useful in your own code and if you would use them. So you can let me know in the comments below the video. Hope to see you on the next video.